Just how far can you soup up a tank from the 1960s? The M60 Patton was the mainstay of the U.S. tank fleet in the 1960s and 1970s, before being replaced by the M1 Abrams tank currently in service. However, more than 5,000 Pattons remain in service in the armies of 19 countries. Earlier this year, Raytheon unveiled its service life extension package SLEP upgrade featuring a new engine, fire control system and 120mm gun. This M60 SLEP is in competition with a pre-existing three-tier upgrade offered by Israel Military Industries for their M60 Sabra. Sabras in Turkish service, designated the M6OT, are active on the battlefield of northern Syria today, while older model patents are fighting on both sides of the war in Yemen. The new patents are faster and deadlier, but are they tough enough for the modern battlefield? The M60 traces its ancestry all the way back to the M26 Pershing heavy tank, a few dozen of which saw action at the end of the World War II. The Pershing was evolved into a series of patent tanks armed with 90mm guns, including the M46, M47 and M48. The M60, introduced in 1960, was the last, a tall profiled brawler designed to outmatch the ubiquitous Soviet T-54 tank by virtue of its heavier armor and long M68 105mm gun. The 50-ton M60s were deployed to Europe in case World War III broke out, and didn't see action in the Vietnam War, except for some bridge-laying and engineering variants. Instead, M48 tanks took on North Vietnamese PT-76s and T-54s in a small number of engagements, and even battled Swedish-made tanks in the Dominican Republic. It was in the Middle East that the M60 Patton first showed its mettle. During the Yom Kippur War, Israeli M60s rumbled to the rescue of the 7th and 188th Armored Brigades on the Golan Heights, breaking the back of a Syrian onslaught numbering over 3,000 tanks. However, on the southern front, at three anti-tank missiles devastated M60s counterattacking the Egyptian beachhead on the Suez Canal. The Patton's tall profile made it an easy target, while its frontally mounted hydraulics were prone to bursting into flames when the armor was penetrated. Nonetheless, the Israelis were so fond of the Patton that they kept it in service until 2014, upgrading them into several generations of Magosh tanks. The Patton saw quite a few upgrades over its service life. The avant-garde M60A2, Starship, variant used a 155mm gun that could fire Shalala anti-tank missiles, it was quickly phased out because of crippling technical limitations. The final version, the M60A3 TTS, came with improved fire control systems and thermal sights that made it an effective night fighter. Some Marine Corps patents were even fitted with explosive reactive armor. However, by the 1980s the Soviet Union had exported large numbers of the T-72 tank, which equaled or outmatched the Patton in armor and firepower. Meanwhile, the United States introduced the M1 Abrams tank, 
which proved a decisive technological leap ahead in both firepower once it received a 120mm gun, and protection, thanks to its composite armor. The last US M60s were operated by the Marine Corps, and finally saw heavy combat in the 1991 Gulf War in Kuwait, knocking out around 100 Iraqi tanks for the loss of a single patent. However, that reflected the unequal training and tactics of the opposing sides more than anything else, and shortly afterwards the patent was phased out of US service. Raytheon's SLEP upgrade focuses on improved firepower and mobility. First, it replaces the old M68 gun with the potent 120mm M256 gun used in the Abrams tank. This will transform the Patton from a tank that would struggle against a 1980s-era T-72 to one that can penetrate most modern tanks. Furthermore, so as to actually hit the target, the M60 SLEP has a new digital targeting system taken from the M1A1D to replace the Patton's dated technology. Modern targeting computers have made tank gunnery while moving viable, so this is a big plus. Finally, the hydraulic system for rotating the turret has been replaced with an electric one, increasing rotation speed and reducing the aforementioned, bursting into flames, problem when hit. Second, Raytheon has replaced the 750 horsepower diesel engine with a brand new 950 horsepower motor. This is nice, because the basic M60 lumbers at 30 miles per hour, while maximum speeds over 40 miles per hour are typical for modern Western tanks. For comparison, the Israeli Sabra 2 upgrade also boasts a 120mm gun of comparable performance paired with a new targeting computer, as well as a superior 1000 horsepower engine which increases speed to 34 miles per hour. Unlike the SLEP, the Sabra also has beefed up armor, giving the turret an angular shape. 